I, I realized that I had spent a lot of time, I'd spent 10 years trying to figure out how to break into the industry, and I knew a whole lot. If somebody came to me for advice, I'd be like, well, I'll do, try this, try this. But I didn't know anything about how to stay in the industry after breaking it, and that, I felt, was a totally different kind of scenario, and it was, it was very stressful for a while. You bring up a good point. Um, like, uh, when you, you mentioned, um, you know, you work with one editor, and then the other editors, they either haven't worked with you, or they don't, they don't know you, or whatever. Uh, I realized recently that oh, like, almost all the editors who work at Marvel now are not the editors, like most of the editors who worked for when I first started working there are not there anymore. So you I miss you, man. What's that? I miss you. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, and you know, a lot of like Andy have gone on to other companies, which is great because now I have contacts over where, yeah. where he's working, you know, Mike Marks working in DC, so I have contacts there, whatever. But some some people just went on to do completely other things. And if I didn't keep up, you know, keep being persistent, keep you know, contacting other editors, keep showing my work off. Um, you know, everyone who ever hired me would have left, and then I don't have any contacts at Marvel anymore. And then, Let me well, elaborate on that a little bit. Just the, the idea of the high turnover rate at Marvel, it's, it's less true at DC, but it's still true with assistant editors and associate editors. How many people, by just a show of hands in this room, would take a job as an assistant editor at Marvel or DC, if offered today? Okay. That's what they tell you on your first day of work. They tell you, we're not going to pay you well, because there are 500 people who want your job. And it's not that they treat me poorly, because I had a great time working at Marvel, but I got married while I was working at Marvel. We started talking about wanting to have kids, and that just wasn't going to happen on my Marvel salary. And reality sets in. And I still love the work, and I love the guys there, and I'm still great friends with a lot of guys at Marvel, but eventually, life intervened. And that is a lot of what happens to assistant editors and associate editors. It has nothing against Marvel, it has nothing against those editors. And it's not that they don't love comics when they leave, even when they leave comics entirely, it's that they, they gotta make a move. <laughs> um, you know, so there is a really high turnover, and that's probably not going to change. So it is constantly refreshing those contacts and meeting new people. Even if you live in New York City, you still have to constantly be meeting editors at Marvel and DC forever. Um, so let's talk a little bit about my chosen three fundamentals of staying in comics. Talent. The man that drew this page has some. This guy named Jim Lee, he's doing all right for himself. Um, but again, everybody's got it, I believe. And, uh, and you need it to stay in. You do need to be talented. Professionalism. You hit your deadlines. You do the best work that you can in the time given. Uh, if you have a problem with the script, if you're an artist or a writer, you, you call your editor, you, you, you get your editor on board. This is something, I, you know, I've actually talked with Mike about this several times, because Mike will have a tendency, if he's having trouble working the script out, working the kinks out, he wants to struggle with it on his own and fix it before he gives it to me, and I keep saying, call me. You know, get me on board. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing, because I, I feel like if I call Andy with a problem with the script, like my paranoia sets in, and be like, well, Andy will think I don't know how to write this script, and then he'll fire me. <laughs> but, uh, but Andy is actually very good at her, and that's not the case at all. It has taken me a while to get past that idea. You have to work with me. That's a creative process. Your, your editors are on your side too. They, yeah, they usually. I mean, I, to my experience, they're always very supportive of anything good or bad that comes up. You know, they understand that. You know, what's happening. I, yeah, part, part of what you what you I mean, I think an important fundamental in staying in comics is trying to come to understand what an editor's needs are. I mean, when I first started out, I think a lot of people started out in their early twenties, and their everything. In your oh, excuse me. Wait, wait, tell me. I'm sorry. It's important life fundamentals. You can do your hands while I hang up on it. Um, you know, you're you're all about you know your 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 life is uh, turning my pages, get more work, get my check, get more work, turn my pages, get more work, and and there's a whole other there's a whole other world going on. In your 
your pages go into the machine, there's a whole other set of needs that you need to understand what editors are looking at someone that, 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 that stuff needs to be on time and why and what, what it means to their careers. And it's, it's their, editors are there like any other person working for a living doing what they want to do and trying to progress and they need to hit certain marks to make sure that the book comes out on time. They, they have priorities, professional priorities that they have to hit. And I began to sort of, when things began to change for me to the better, when I began to realize that I need to tailor, I need to realize that what I'm really trying to do is to make the editor's life easier and to, make, and to, to help the editor fulfill his goals. It, it, it's, it's very a cooperative thing. We're all, we're all trying to work together to a certain set of goals. And if you can be sensitive to what other people, like any other job, if you can be sensitive to what the goals are of the other people in your team and you can help them try to achieve their goals, they're going to help you. And Dennis, I mean, when I asked you to help out on X Factor, wow. That was something. That, that was such a jerk move on my part. How many of you guys know who Ryan Sook is? The artist Ryan Sook. He's very talented. He's very good. And he's meticulous. Absolutely. He's also late at all times. And I called up Dennis. I was like, Dennis, I see something in your work. It kind of reminds me of Ryan Sook. He's like, oh, thanks, man. Thanks. I just, in fact, could you imitate Ryan Sook? But, you know, at like three pages a day. <laughs> that went on for three, I think three issues in a row. Right? And, and, and now listen to what I said. Don't be yourself. Don't impress me with the Dennis Calero-ness of your pages. Be Ryan, be this other guy. That is such a crap thing to say to somebody. <laughs> just, just completely devalue Dennis's work. And I love you, man. <laughs> but I, I had a need as an editor. This book had to look consistent. It needed to look Ryan Sookish. Because that's what we had solicited in the book was returnable. And, um, and I love Ryan. I still talk to Ryan too. Just FYI. But Dennis was like, what do you need? And so that was it. That was the name of the game. And after that, the book, you know, he, he did several more issues on his own. And then it was much more, Dennis, be, do your thing. But in order to, to do that, he needed to meet my needs, and he understood that very well, which was a very, very helpful thing for me. Thank you again. You're welcome. Um, I mean, I, I should also, if I can briefly say real quick, I should also, like, one of the things I came here to do is to emphasize that the, the life of a freelancer is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it really isn't. It really isn't. Now, now that being said, I understand, I've, I've worked in the square market. I understand that the normal market. I understand that, especially these days, that no no job is really beyond the you know anyone get fired, anyone can get laid off. Um, that being said, what we do, and it really it is any any entertainment. I have friends who are actors and directors, and, and, and I, I knew I I have a, a friend of mine who's the director of a, of a recent film that, that he was telling me that this film tanked. So it, this film had Jude Law had had pretty major people in it. And so this film tanks that I've been working on for seven years, I'm going to have to almost start from scratch in terms of getting cachet, raising money, etc. And it didn't, then it did tank. And, and that's just, it's the risk you take when you go into any sort of entertainment. Because entertainment is fluff. It's not food. It's not clothing. It's, it, I mean, if you, if anyone who really wants to make money guaranteed, go into real estate. Because any of the, any of the food, clothing, shelter, these are the things that are required for life. Comics is not, a, we, we may think it's required for life, but really, if I gave you a choice of three things, and it was comics, food, clothing, or shelter, I'm pretty sure for most of you, I don't know, maybe you'd be building shacks out of comics, but <laughs> it's not easy, and that's where you know the persistence and sort of the, the faith in yourself has to come, and, and I don't know how it is for you, I'm sure it was kind of similar for you, but it took a long time for that panic to set in, like, oh, you know, I'm, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working, Work is coming in, it's pretty regular, but it's still that panic, where's the next job that I'm coming, where's the next job that I'm coming? It takes a long time to, to issue yourself of that panic and have some confidence. And on just a little taste of the life of a freelancer, uh, how many other people were at the drawing board at 3 a.m. on a Sunday night trying to desperately meet those deadlines, right? And, uh, oh, there's a dude over there, he knows how to work. That's right. Um, so, get used to it, because it doesn't stop. Yeah, I, I actually had a conversation with Klaus Jansen today, pulling on all, all night or the other day. I was like, 
Klaus, you're a legend. You don't have to pull your legs. Like, yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, so we have talent and we have professionalism. And the third thing, and I've tried other words, but let's just be honest, <laughs> be nice to people. Be nice to fans. Be nice to fellow creators. Or is there sometimes known competitors? Although I rarely hear somebody actually say that. Uh, and be nice to you know editors and publishers, whoever, whoever you're working with, whoever you're interacting with. Let's just extend this to life. In general, just be nice. Just be nice to people. Be likable. Um, you don't have to go out of your way to like be somebody you're not. But just be a little laid back and be easy to work with. Um, and the good news again is you really only need two of these. So you can be talented and professional, but a total <laughs> jerk. But if you're that talented and you always hit your deadlines, I'll work with you. I'll put up with your nonsense. You can be talented, you can waffle on your deadlines and not format your script properly or whatever, to a certain extent. But be really nice and really, like, somebody I really enjoy working with, despite those things. And I'll work with you again. And I'm saying I would. And I really mean most editors would. And, once again, we come to the